breaking news on actor Bruce Willis. Today, the actor's family revealed his health condition has worsened. He's now been diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. Nearly a year ago, the actor's health struggles came to light when he was diagnosed with aphasia. His family now says his condition has progressed. And in a statement today, the family said Bruce is hoping that his diagnosis will help raise some awareness. In an effort to do that, we are joined now by Dr. Amy Sanders from Hartford Healthcare. Dr. Sanders, thank you so much for being with us. First off, can you explain for us the difference between aphasia and FTD? I'd be happy to. First, I would like to extend my my support and, and, and condolences to Mr. Willis and, and his family. Uh, aphasia is defined as problems with language, more specifically, trouble either producing language or understanding what is said to oneself. It is a symptom. It's only a symptom. It is not by itself um, a diagnosis or, or a disease. Aphasia can happen for a number of different reasons. In many older adults, and probably the type of aphasia that is familiar to um, a greater preponderance of people is when somebody has aphasia as a consequence of a stroke. So then it's something that begins very suddenly and is, is usually pretty obvious. When aphasia happens as a consequence of underlying neurodegenerative pathology, which has long been my suspicion that that's what's going on with, with Mr. Willis, um, it is something that we classify as usually primary progressive aphasia. Primary means that the aphasia is not occurring secondary to something else, to something else usually meaning a stroke, and it is progressive over time. There are actually three types of primary progressive aphasia, but two of the three are relevant today. I don't know much about the specifics of Mr. Willis's symptoms, but two of the three types of primary progressive aphasia are actually classified under the heading of the frontotemporal lobar degenerations. So if you will, they're the other side of the coin of FTD, which is frontotemporal dementia. Frontotemporal dementia usually affects people at a much younger age than the um, a dementia like Alzheimer's disease, which usually affects people when they're much, much older, often as much as 20 years older. Sometimes people begin exhibiting frontotemporal lobar degeneration symptoms in the form of a primary progressive aphasia, but they can later go on and develop some of the symptoms of the full frontotemporal dementia syndrome. And it goes the other way as well. Sometimes patients who were uh, initially diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia eventually develop the language problems. Before we... They can be very tricky diagnoses to make. So it doesn't surprise me that a year has gone by since the original announcement of the aphasia diagnosis and today's more sobering diagnosis. And before we let you go, I mean, what can his family expect? What can other families expect for those living with this? So it's a it's a tough um, prediction to make. Many times with FTD, uh, individuals lose insight into their own condition. They lose judgment. They may have behavioral problems. That's why FTD is often known as behavioral variant meaning it's characterized primarily by problems with behavior as opposed to problems with types of thinking. And Mr. Willis already has the communication problem. So it, it's going to be important for his, his family to be able to sort of learn his version of this disease. Everybody's version is different. So they'll have to watch him closely to see what is happening to him on a day-to-day -day basis. And it is a one day at a time kind of diagnosis. Dr. Amy Sanders from Hartford HealthCare, thank you very much. I think we all join you in wishing him and his family and, and all the people really uh, living with this diagnosis the very best, because we understand there's, there's no cure, right? They can only treat it. There, there is no cure, there is no treatment, but help is available from organizations like the Alzheimer's Association, and there's also an organization called the Association, wait, theAFTD.org, the Association for Frontotemporal Dementia.org. Well, we certainly appreciate what you and everyone else is doing to help folks in this situation. Thank you.